This work is on browser extension fingerprinting and is a collaboration with Panos Ilya, Costa Solomos, and my advisor, uh, Jason Polakis, from University of Illinois at Chicago. Browser extensions are a small programs that can extend functionality of the browsers. They are very popular. There are more than uh, 100,000 of the extensions in the Chrome Web Store, and some of them have more than 10 million users. Security threats of extensions have been studied before. In this work, we focus on the privacy aspect of the browser extensions. Uh, installed extensions might reveal users' sensitive information. For example, in this slide, you can see some examples that can reveal religious beliefs or users' politic uh, views or ethnicity of the user. So the main idea in this paper is to uh, create a system to detect these extensions and then infer the sensitive information about the users. The threat model is, uh, can be, you can see the threat model here. Uh, the user uh, visits the attacker's website and this website can run a JavaScript code to detect the extensions and then inferring some sensitive information about the user. Uh, for being able to detect the extensions, we need to first generate a fingerprint for each extension. Uh, and we have four different uh, techniques for generating the fingerprints. The first one is web accessible resources. The second one is the behavior of the extensions. And the next two approach uh, are based on the communication of the extensions, which are two novel techniques. Uh, extensions might have some uh, resources that are accessible from the DOM. Websites can probe these resources to detect which extensions are installed in the user's browser. This is a straightforward and well-known approach for detecting the extensions, and we just uh, added this one to our work to maximize the coverage of our attack. The next one, the next kind of fingerprint is based on the behavior of the extensions. Extensions can add something to the page, can add an image or remove a text or replacing the text with something else. For example, on the image in the left, you can see an extension that search for a specific input element and then inserting an image into this element. Or on the image uh, in the right, you can see an extension which search for a specific word and then replacing this word with something else. So for being able to detect these extensions, we need to first trigger the extensions to show us their behavior and then collecting, collecting their behaviors. For this purpose, we created a honey page which can trigger the extensions. This honey page contains uh, different HTML attributes different HTML tags, everything that a simple uh, web page can have. And also, we have a, a set of words in this page which can trigger the extensions. And we observe that those words can be found in the uh, description of the extensions. We actually executed the extension on its description, and we observed which words have been changed. So we collected all those words as something which can trigger the extension to show its behavior. After creating this honey page, uh, we executed each extension on this honey page, and we collected all the modifications that happened in this page. And based on the modifications, we create a signature, a, a fingerprint for the extensions. Actually, this fingerprint is something that can be used for detecting the extensions. The next type of the fingerprints is based on the communication between extensions and websites. Actually, extensions can have uh, different components. And here we look at the communication between the content scripts and websites, because the content script is the component that can have a, the direct access to the DOM. Uh, for example, here you can see an extension that uses post message function to send a message to websites. So a fingerprint for this extension can be the message that has been sent by this function. And uh, we collect these messages uh, to be able to detect this, this extension. 
And the last type of the fingerprints is based on the list of resources that are fetched by the extensions. For example, in this extension, you can see that uh, this extension fetches a, a JavaScript file. So the URL of this file can be used as a fingerprint to detect this extension. And uh, in the website, we can use Performance API to collect all these URLs. The first uh, one module of our system is for uh, generating the fingerprints. And in this module, we use all these approaches that, that I explained to create the different fingerprints. We create uh, some VAR fingerprints and behavioral fingerprints. But we have some challenges here that we should answer. For example, in the fingerprinting generation, we can see some extensions have multiple behaviors. As an example, an extension in the first execution might add image number one to the page, but in the second execution, it might add image number two. Or some other extensions might add a dynamic value to the page. For example, each time that you execute the extension, it adds a new timestamp to the page. So we need to find all these dynamic values and removing them from the fingerprints. For doing that, we repeated the fingerprint generation phase three times, and we found all those dynamic values and removed them. After generating the fingerprints, we can use all of them in the detection phase to detect the extensions. Uh, we observe that we don't need to be very strict in this phase, and we can allow a certain number of components to mismatch. For example, if one extension has 100 different components in its fingerprint, uh, if we can match 90 components, it is enough for us to say that this extension is installed in the user's browser. And finally, after uh, detecting the, after collecting the list of installed extension. If one uh, extension's fingerprint is a subset of another one, uh, we remove this extension from the list of extensions. In, our, in the paper, we evaluated different scenarios in different challenges. One of them was a scenario that a user uh, might have different extensions in its browser. And modification of one extension can affect the modification of other extensions. So we have to evaluate what, to see what uh, our system can do in this scenario. Uh, to evaluate, uh, we randomly installed a set of extensions and we use our system to detect them. We repeated this process 100 times, and we saw that our system always correctly identifies more than 97% of the installed extensions. And we had some false positives, and it was less than, on average, it was less than 5%, and the false negative rate also was less than 2%. And uh, for optimizing the attack, we offloaded most of the computations to the server side, and uh, the client side uh, attack takes uh, less than nine seconds, and the average server side computation needs uh, less than four seconds. To compare our work to uh, previous studies, we are using multiple class of attacks, and we are checking more than 100,000 extensions, and we can detect much more extensions than previous studies. Recently, a defense against extension fingerprinting has proposed. In this work, uh, different random values and dynamic values are being added to the behavior of the extensions to prevent them to be detectable. What our system can by design can find all those random values and can remove them from the uh, fingerprint of the extensions. Let's see an example here. Here we have two different fingerprints and the yellow components are those components which uh, are being randomized by this countermeasure. So our system can find them and remove them from the fingerprint. So the fingerprints will become something shorter. For example, in the second example, 
uh, the fingerprint became something too short and cannot be used anymore. But in the cases like the first fingerprint, it still is something unique and can be used for detecting the extensions. We evaluated all of our behavior-based fingerprints and we saw that uh, at least 83% of our fingerprints remain effective even after using this countermeasure. But uh, still we think that this defense, this countermeasure is an important step in the right direction and we hope that our work incentivizes more research in this area. That was the uh, fingerprint generation module. The next module is for inferring sensitive information from the extensions. We have three class of inference attacks to do that. The first inference attack is classifying the extensions. Actually, we classify the description of the extensions. We first pre-process them, and then we translate them if they are not in English, and then we clean them. Actually, ex the descriptions ha might have some irrelevant text, such as change log and other stuff, so we clean them, we remove those stuff, and then we use Google NLP API to classify the extensions. Here you can see parts of the classes, the results. The red ones are those classes which can reveal sensitive information about the user, and the gray ones are those classes that uh, reveal some interests of the user. And the gray classes are not very sensitive, but they can uh, still be used for privacy invasive behaviors uh, such as targeted advertising. The next inference attack is based on finding some keywords in the description of the extensions. For example, here you can see an extension which has some keywords related to a specific religion. So by finding these keywords, we can categorize this extension as a sensitive one. For example, uh, for finding uh, these keywords, we used a spaces name, name entity recognition API, and also we used different word lists. Uh, and the third inference attack is based on the reviews for the extension. Actually, we extracted the name of the extension's reviewers, and we mapped the names to the ethnicity and sex. Uh, and if for uh, one extension, the majority of the reviewers comes from a specific ethnicity, we can generalize it, and we can say that yeah, most likely this extension is used by that specific ethnicity. Uh, for example, you can see some uh, reviews here for a specific extension. All the names here are Indian names, uh, so we can infer that this extension is used by Indian people. And uh, we manually check this extension. We observe that the description of this extension is in English, and there is no sign of India. Uh, and interestingly, when we open the website of this extension, we can see that, yes, really, this extension is created for people from India. In summary, in this work, we demonstrated the first automated creation and detection of behavior-based fingerprints for identifying browser extensions. We introduced two novel fingerprinting techniques that are robust against all existing countermeasures. We presented the largest extension fingerprinting study and evaluated a state-of-art countermeasure. We presented the first empirical analysis on the privacy inference attacks enabled by the browser extensions. And also, we conducted the largest extension university analysis and explored the use of user reviews as a novel de-anonymization vector, which can be found in the paper. Thank you so much. All right. Any questions from the audience? Hi. Um, the tool you use to create the fingerprints, uh, do you have that online somewhere so that other people can use that and make experiments? Uh, actually, uh, we think that these fingerprints that we have created is something sensitive and, and it can be used in a real world to detect the interest of the users. So we think that we cannot publish it now. Okay, but the one thing, uh, the fingerprints, the tools to create fingerprint is something else. So that's why I'm wondering. Uh, we can publish that part, yes. The tool, yeah. yes. That would be excellent. Thanks. Okay. All right. 
Uh, so I have a question also. Sure. So the first two techniques for identifying. Can you just get into the microphone? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so the first two techniques for identifying uh, extensions, the web accessible resources and the behavior thing, you know, was proposed in, uh, in past work. Did you change these techniques at all, or did you just adopt them together with your two new techniques? Uh, actually, uh, we didn't check the first one, the, war, the web access resources. It, we just, that was a very straightforward, and we just use it. The second approach, the behavior base, actually has proposed before. And, uh, but it wasn't automated. So you know that uh, the, all the, uh, in that work, it was proposed that the extensions have a behavior, and this is unique behavior, which can be used for that purpose. But there wasn't a tool to automate this process. So we made this process automate. We made all the fingerprint generation parts, detection part, and also evaluating automates. Okay, all right, uh, one more question. Uh, Alex Cabravelos, NC State. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, the Honey Pages? Did you make any changes to the original Honey Pages, or did you, uh, is it basically like vanilla Honey Pages? Yeah, actually, uh, the novel idea in the creating of Honey Page, it was the list of words that we added to it. Actually, uh, for finding some words that can uh, trigger an extension, we executed each extension on, the, on its description. So in this way, we can find the, a specific word in the description of the extension that can trigger the extension. So in this way, we collected all those words that can trigger. OK, so not, nothing from analyzing the code of the extension? No. I see. OK, thank you. Sure. All right. Okay. Let's thank the speaker.